What's up, guys? My name is Section from the Deviants, and today we're going to be reacting to Ruby Fairy Tales Episode 3. So, I believe, hold on, hold on, let me. This one's called The Shallow Sea. And okay, so if it has anything to do with the sea, which I'm guessing it does, or the ocean, or any large bodies of water, I'm going to hate it. See, something you guys need to know about me is that I hate. I hate bodies of water. Hate it. Okay. But the description says Ospin recounts two distinct origin myths regarding the faunus. So this is one of the things that I questioned back. I forgot what season was or what volume it was where Ospin talks about his past. And when he like comes back to the human world, he finds that there are people who are called faunus. Ever since then, I was wondering like, okay, so how exactly did the faunus come to be and at that time i was questioning like okay maybe the the brothers created faunuses because the brothers looked like faunuses themselves because they were they were humans with a single like animal trait right the 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 good brother had like elk horns or like deer horns i believe whereas the the evil brother had ram horns Anyways, uh, I don't know if they're going to be going off of that assumption, but I mean, I guess we'll see. So without further ado, let's get straight on to it. Make sure to support the original content as always. All right, let's get going in three, two, one, and wow. Wow, 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 wow. Hey. Faunus parents entertain their children with bedtime stories about where they came from. Oh, okay. We are special, they say. We were chosen. Right, get it from the two different but sides. Chosen by whom? Like from Faunus and humans. The god of animals traveled all over Remnant, seeking those who were a little more than human, and invited them to sail to the shallow sea to discover uh, their destiny. What, Menagerie? You did not fit in where you came from, but I know who you are. Leave th this boat. Enter the water. It will wash your old life away. Does that and sound like the good brother? It's been just below the surface. You belong here. You are home. Some of the people leapt at the chance the god offered. Okay. <laughs> Others were more skeptical. Though the sea did not touch you, it has revealed your own shallowness. Fables often teach lessons, such as the importance of looking beneath the skin. But for mm. Faunus, the story of the shallow sea does something more vital. It reminds them from a young age that their own lives have value. So the shallow Faunus are forced to grow up quickly. As they mature, they learn darker stories, in which the truth lies closer to the surface. Many, many years ago, in a faraway land, there was a war between humans and animals. Okay. It'll be a Romeo and Juliet story. Why do you fight each other? Are you Are human? You an animal? I am neither and both. Why are you fighting? They, they are, are not, not like, like us. us. Why must everyone be the same? We, we worry, worry about what, about what they, they might, might do, do to us. us. So you have something in common after all. Yeah. Judge not what you fear others may do, but by their actions. We've seen the evil in their hearts. Humans are even more capable of destroying things than they are at creating. Animals are stronger than us, but they will not join us in fighting the Grim. Dear Lord, where, why have you, you forsaken me? to control us. Why should we risk our lives to protect yours? The Grim have never bothered us. All we want is to be free. Have they You not? are too wild. You must be tamed so you won't steal from us. All we want is to live in safety and in peace. You assume the worst about one another, but you are more alike than you know. Mm-hmm. If only you could see your best qualities as I do, and embrace your differences. 
I can end this conflict Maybe here, like, nah. but only if all submit to my judgment, whatever it may be. They don't look like they're gonna we agree. Accept accept your judgment. Judgment. Oh, okay. They accept it. He's gonna like merge them. God would choose the superior species. Perhaps they have. Were you human or animal before? It doesn't matter anymore. I can see so far. Look, I have hands. I'm so strong. I'm walking like a monkey. Seems we are neither human nor animals now. Then what are we? Better, Better than, than both. <laughs> and it seems we now have a common enemy. All animals are like great. Yeesh, headshot. But we live here. She should have been fighting you Thanos. Don't we don't even know what you are. Were we so narrow-minded when we were human? Yeah. Yes. And so that, the that was his line. In search of a place they could live peacefully together where they could become the best versions of themselves. These fables may seem fantastic, yet they reflect the real and unfortunate history of conflicts between humans and Faunus. And though different versions of the same story, they have some things in common. Faunus leaving behind their old lives to create a new future for themselves, mm -hmm. as well as the notion that humans and Faunus need each other to survive. If we all set aside our differences and work toward a shared purpose, how much better would Remnant be for everyone? A lot. A lot. So you guys wouldn't die in the end when the brothers come back? Hey, we hope you enjoyed that episode of Ruby for Yeah, it was actually pretty good. Experience I also wonder if the, the, the god of animals or the animal god, whatever it be, maybe, is actually the, the elder brother. But the Faunus had kind of like, I wouldn't say twisted it, but they view him as the god of animals. Because with all these fairy tales, the one thing or the couple things that we know are true are like the, the woman in, t in the tower, right? You know, that's true. And then we also know the two brothers are true because of like Ozpin and, and Salem and stuff like that. I don't know. I found it interesting that both the stories were told at the point of view of like Faunus. Like when I heard or when I saw that two stories were going to be told, I thought, okay, maybe the fairy tale that the Faunus usually tell each other is going to be one of them. And then the fairy tale that humans tell each other about Faunus. And then we would have saw like the, um, I guess the contradictory between the two, and then maybe see some similarities between the two and kind of like pluck the, um, the truth from the similarities. But these two were also good or like the first one was like how or like what parents usually tell the the children to kind of like say, OK, you guys have worth, you know, and, and stuff like that. Whereas the second story was more of a I wasn't saying like a teenager, but like a just a grown up version of how Faunus came to be. You can also kind of label it as kind of more realistic, but I mean, still far fetched. Then all that also makes you wonder, like, where are all the natural animals in the Ruby universe? Like, we know that there are like natural animals in the universe, but we don't we like we rarely see them. And I wonder if there's any truth in the second story. If like the reason why there's not as many like animals like naturally throughout the, the world is because the God just like, hey, let's just turn him into um, half animals, half human. Or I guess human with an animal feature. It's something to think about. Something to think about. Anyways, that was my reaction to Ruby Fairy Tales Season 1 Episode 3. If you like my reaction, make sure to like and subscribe. If you guys want me to know anything more, put it in the comment section down below. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.